Hello and welcome to this episode of the Worship Band Builder Podcast, where we are working with you to lay the foundations for skillful worship. I'm Eric Roberts, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Emily Roberts. Hello, everybody. And today we're talking about something that's so, so, so fun. Sound equipment and mostly monitors. We're going to talk about monitors. Are you getting excited? Yes, get super excited about this. This is probably, you know, I'm excited because it's a gear episode and it's kind of geeky and we get to talk about all these little things. And because of that, make sure you go to worshipbandbuilder.com slash podcasts. You can see this episode. You can see the show notes. You can see all the links to the Amazon links, like to our monitors, our inner monitors. But can they get sausage links? And you can get sausage links. Do you have any quotes for us today on this episode? (laughs) No quotes. I wish I had some sausage links, but no quotes. Okay, so we are going to, because this is going to be slam-packed episode of just really great stuff we're going to get into it. Can we get into it? Let's do it. We're going to talk about monitors, and I'm going to get technical. There's two ways to get a mix to your monitors, okay? There's two different ways. Aux mixes, okay, which is off your board, auxiliary mix, or through an Aviom system or a Cat5 system like Aviom called a personal mixer. And right now, in this moment in history, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, back 10 years ago, Avion was the big personal monitor mix thing, but now they're coming out with iPhone things and Bluetooth things and oh, all these things. yes, they would. Yes, they would. And then there are three ways. So there's two ways to get the mix to yourself, okay? Either through an auxiliary mix, the old school, and I'll call it old school, or this new way through personal mixers. And there's three ways to deliver that sound to your ears. Three, at least, main ways that we're going to talk about. Number one is floor monitors. Old school. All right? The wedge. The wedge. Number two is small personal monitors. Okay, that's sort of like, it's just a little bit different than floor monitors. But I I put it on there because it works well in church. And then the third way is through in-ear monitors. Is that your favorite? No, that's not my favorite. It's not your favorite? No. I, I, I kind of actually hate in-ear monitors. But we, later in the episode, we're going to talk about why I hate them and why I love them. Yes. We'll, it is a love-hate we'll relationship. That. Okay. But if you can't hear yourself, you're sunk. Why? Well, because if you can't hear yourself, at least in relation to the rest of the music, then you will sound bad. Just bad. Yeah. If you can't... Like when you, you're watching TV and you hear a really good singer singing all flat, and we're sitting there like, yeah, I don't think they can hear themselves. That's... You can't hear yourself or the other musicians. It's hard to stay on rhythm. It's hard to sing on pitch. I get really cranky, and I don't even <laughs> want to play if I can't hear myself. So you have to you have to be able to hear other people too. Why? Well, same reason. It's all your pitch. Well, at least as a vocalist. Okay, I'm speaking as a vocalist. Your pitch is relative to what is being played. Yeah, and like if you're the drummer. You got to be able to hear the bass player and the guitar players. If you're a guitar player, you got to be able to hear the drummer because you're playing together. The drummer is holding everybody together rhythmically. So if I can't hear myself, I am in a really bad mood. Okay? Yeah, I, I don't mean rhythmically. I just mean the tempo. He is he is holding the tempo for everybody. We hope he is. I mean, he should be. He should be drummers. <laughs> Please, drummers. Shame on you that aren't holding the tempo. <laughs> you know who you are. All right, so let's go with number one, the old school wedge monitors, and we'll talk about them. There's two different types of them, and we talk about them more in our in our webinars, powered and non-powered. Powered, for, for those kind of newbie sound people out there, you can think of them as the ones with the little blue lights on them. You know, they actually have power in them, and they have power amps built into them, and they're cranking out, and they're really the newer ones. We have links to these Behringer Eurolive B21Ds, which are basically just, uh, actually, it's, yeah, little 12-inch powered floor wedges for about 200 to $300 or so, and I have a link on there. Uh, if they're non-powered, then you have to have power amps and all that stuff, and we talk about that, I think, in some of our past webinars. So basically, regardless of that, they're sitting on the floor, they're pointing up at your face, and somehow your voice is coming out of them, okay? Yes. And your voice is also coming out of the main speakers going to the audience. Yes. So this is also, just think about that. You have a mix that's coming out of the floor wedge to your face. Right. And then you have a mix coming out of your mains to the audience. There's two different mixes going on. That's why I called it an auxiliary mix. On a mixing board, you have your main house mix and your auxiliary mix. 
Now, in a mixing board, there can be two auxiliaries, four auxiliaries, eight auxiliaries, and each one of those auxiliaries can go to a different band member, the drummer, the bass player, the guitar player, the vocalist. They can all have their own individual auxiliary mix. They can. They can. It gets complicated. it does. When the sound person is required to make the monitors accommodate everyone that is on the stage that gets complicated and especially because most of these at least if you have the larger monitors you're not going to have a monitor for each individual probably two or three of you on one side of the stage are sharing the monitor and each person needs to be able to hear themselves. And what that means is they all want to hear themselves the loudest For sure coming out of the monitor. So it's hard to get a balance where each person is hearing what they need to hear to play at a level of excellence. Yeah, and that brings me to this. So how do you use a floor wedge? Number one, you got to, and this is, there's different ways. Keep them close to you, okay? The closer they are to you, the better. If you can get your own personal floor wedge with your own aux mix, then you can say, I'm aux mix two, and you can tell the sound guy what you want to hear more, and you're perfect. Keep it close to you, keep the volume down. That's really the best way to do it. If you have a lot of people on the same monitor, you're going to have to back it up a bit, turn it up a bit, and you just create more noise. Or if you have really only two monitors for a whole bunch of band members on stage, I would really put them on the sides of the stage, pointing in and call them side fills. So it basically just fills the stage up a little bit. And it's more of a, more of a, an average mix, not, not an individual personal thing. It's a, so you're also relying on the main house mix. You're, you're hearing some of both in a side fill monitor situation where you're just using monitors from the side to point in, you can kind of put the main mix in there, the house mix. And like, that's pretty good. It just gives you something to hear. Okay, so this is why, and we'll get to those little Avion mixers or personal monitor mixers. They're so amazing, even with the stage monitor, because you can mix them yourself. If you can mix your own monitor mix from stage, it's a huge, like a million times like to space better than trying to tell your sound guy like a little more vocal, no, a little less guitar. I mean, it's just a lot, yes. of, a lot better. So here's ways I hook them up, okay? Here's the ways I hook up a floor wedge, and I'll tell you what I would do. But from the aux mix, from the main mixing board. So you basically hook the aux mix one up to the floor monitor, and you say, I'm in aux one, and you tell the sound guy, and he puts, he does that. Or you can go out of an Avion unit or a personal monitor mixer on stage into a floor wedge, which is my favorite way to mix. Because then you have complete control over what's coming out of that speaker on the fly, with an Avion unit, and it's also a floor wedge. It's not in your ear, it's actually on the ground. So if you're not already saddled with a particular sound system, it would probably be more beneficial for people to have more of the mini monitors than fewer and bigger. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, and that's why I like, I think the mini monitors next. So let me go, I'll put you, so here's another couple ways I hook up and then we'll, we'll do those mini mocks monitors if you're not saddled if you have the budget to do a personal monitoring system then yeah more smaller like exactly what you said more smaller uh wedges that's fine uh you can put a small amp on the stage right under you like i put my little practice amp under me and just turn it right up to my face and then i can plug my guitar into it even if i'm going into the mixer into the uh, line into the mixer i still have my little little amp just for me not for the you know, people people in church are getting weird. Like, we don't want amps on stage. We want a quiet stage. We want all this in-ear stuff. But still, if you want to have a little guitar amp and you point it up to you, that's I don't find worship leaders when I go places they don't they don't mind that because I'm not cranking it up and it's not super loud. It's just right there, close to me, it gives me a little bit of sound. Okay, different ways. So uh, it's good for you. So you can do that. It can be a small amp. And like Emily said, number two, these mini, mini monitors. So they're like little teeny monitors. And I have them on here. Euro Live Mini PA Monitor, $238 a piece. Or they have another another one on there that's like 100 bucks. But basically, it's a multi-purpose, 150-watt active speaker. It's very small. Uh, it can be hooked up to, it can actually be you know hooked up in between your... Um, your mic stand, so it can be up close to your face even. So the closer you're to your face, the lo- you know the lower the volume. I was going to ask about that. It looked to me like the 
This was a Behringer yeah, model. A, yes, yeah, the that Euro was a Live. I looked it up on Amazon and it was two hundred and thirty eight dollars. And it looked to me like you could attach it to a stand so that it would be yeah you can put it on a stand and back in the day they had one that you can actually one like that that you could put in the middle of your music stand it's mic stand it's weird because it would come up it would be there and then your mic would come out of the top of oh, it oh really so it'd be right there it'd be uh, sort well, of this one's cute it looks like one of those like really old-fashioned mini TVs almost. Yeah, it's, it's a little. And those are great. You put them up closer to your head or closer to your body, and then you can keep them lower, and they're not going to create a bunch of loud noise. The biggest problem with stage monitors is what you said earlier. Everybody wants to be loud. Everybody wants to be loudest, and everybody turns it up, and they keep turning it. Can you put a little more of me, a little more of me? And all of a sudden, mm. it's so loud that the audience can hear the monitor mix louder than they hear the main mix. And that's why most worship leaders are getting that weird, like, we don't want any monitors on stage. We don't want any of this on stage. Because once you get too much noise on stage, you can't mix the room because you got all this I was going to say there's bleed over. There's bleed over into the room. So if you really want to do, uh, not have in ears, but you want to have some small, go small wedges, go more of them, and then just make sure that you control them, that they're low enough so that they're not super, super loud. I'm sure that... Everybody up there can can be considerate and 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 keep them at a reasonable volume if that's what you're doing. I would think another advantage to these mini ones is just because they're more portable. the The one that I looked at was seven pounds, and I know that the the old standard wedge monitors were not seven pounds. Yeah, and and I, and I think the Euro Live is a Mackie, just to make that correction in the. And the Behringer is the B1005. I think the Behringer is 109. And it may the Eurolive might be a Behringer, but I think that one of those is more expensive and it might be a Mackie. But either way, Mackie or Behringer, they look identical. Just want to make sure. Okay. If you look online, you'll see um, the Eurolive um, might be a Behringer or it might be a Mackie. I don't know. I'll know later, but I don't know now. <laughs> um, the Behringer Eurolive. So yeah, it probably is Eurolive. It probably is Behringer. But I think that um, anyway, there's one here that's $109. And that link is in our show notes as well. It This this all makes... You guys probably sit around like if you're not a musician or if you're just like getting new to this. These guys are really obsessed about monitors. But monitors are all I care about when I go to play somewhere. I'm like, where am I going to hear myself? And can I hear everybody else? And can I be able to play? Am I going to be able to hear what's going on? Uh, to add one more thing to this, if you want to lower your stage volume, and we'll do much more of this this year on the podcast and in our um, Foundations sound track, you can put a cage around the drums or get electric drums, get the drums lower. Because the only reason why we all want to have the monitors louder is because we can't hear over the drums. So think of this as a, as a holistic approach. Don't just think, well, we got to get bigger monitors. No, how about get a smaller drum set? Or how about put the drum set in a cage and just use what you have. It's all about controlling volume over the whole band. Yes, and a lot of drummers do not like any of those options. They don't like being behind the cage, and they don't like the electric drum kit. Um, yeah, and they just they just finicky. They just complain about everything, those drummers. Well, but, I mean, I guess that is just part of being a team player. Yeah. You know, you'd like to be able to just, you know bang on the drums all day as loud as you want and as fast as you want i know how you <laughs> but, drummers are but, but sometimes but, we have to take one for the team and it seems like the shields are a little more acceptable anymore i mean even even the millennials have shields around their drums now they oh, think it's okay. cool you know okay. what i mean it's like they do. yeah and they have these companies that have come out really really high in nice drum cages where they're like very like fishbowl type drum stuff oh, that sounds expensive it's expensive and, and and i found one online it's a, they're about five or seven thousand dollars but i found a guy who made one legitly for like 1500 okay. so I'll put, I'll put some links in that in the description but that's we made we've made those before too there's ways to do it but you have to control the drum volume first especially small churches you really got to control the drum volume first okay and then these monitors come into play now if you want to get rid of all stage volume if you want to get rid of you know like all the amps and all the stage monitors and everything it's a harder road but it there are some 
It's in-ear monitors. That's number three. It's it's. Uh, I'm going to tell you why I love them and why I hate them. I've used them pretty extensively, and most of my life I did not use them. They weren't super popular 10, 15, 20 years ago, for churches at least. Well, you always see musicians on TV, and they, and they pull those little plugs out of their ears and they're struggling while they're yeah. while they're playing because the mix is somehow not right in their ear yeah and so the in-ear monitors it's why i love them i put this down here because i don't want to get on a big rant you can get your own awesome mix if you're using an app or an aviom so you can actually get a really awesome mix inside your head if you're able to use personal mixers if you can't use a personal mixer i do not want in-ears in my ear okay Ooh, yeah. You can save your hearing if you turn st- and you have to turn stuff way down. So if you're in a band scenario where we have uh, some of our churches now I play with, they have the drummer and everything, and I like to put them in because I just I can turn everybody off. It's like it earplugs them out, and then I can turn myself down real low and play. So I can stand and practice for two hours and walk out not feeling like oh I just had these drums b- pounding in my ears for two hours. And I love them because you can get rid. Well, that's why you can get rid of the loud stage volume. You can kind of plug your ears up. Okay. Okay, here's why. Uh, And the added benefit is to these in-ears, you can run a click track and you can run all the click tracks and tracks you want. If you're going to run this type of thing that's kind of modern and new in worship, you have to have in-ears, period. You can't Mm -hmm. run a click track through a stage monitor. Without the in-ears, generally only one person on the stage has got the click. Maybe the drummer, yeah. But he's got to have an in-ear because you can't. So you, it opens up a lot for what people want to do. They want to sync to a track or they want to do this. They have to have in-ears. And here's why I hate them. Favorite part of the episode. They, they make you feel disconnected from the performance and audience. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a way around that, and I'll tell you that. But if the mix isn't perfect, it's distracting, super distracting. That's why people always yanking those out of their ears because it's weird. It's disconnecting. And you can damage your hearing if you're wearing only one. There's a lot of research now. If you pull out one in-ear, you're generally going to destroy your, your hearing, and it's not good for your he- ears to have only mm. one in-ear. You see that a lot. And, the, and there's why. Because, and you can do your research, you can Google this, but if you turn up, you, you tend to turn up the volume of the left ear. Let's say you pull your right ear out. Okay. You're going to crank up your pack. Because now you're hearing all this loud music on in your open ear, and now you're going to crank up your pack to match, to match that in your that. left ear, which is going to be this cranking loud, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be a really loud thing. So you, you damage your hearing when you do that. And you also lose the feel of the band in in ears. When you are on a completely quiet stage, you don't have that, you know, the thumpy of the drum set going. You might still have a drum set, but the bass is not there. I mean, it feels really empty unless your mm-hmm. in-ear mix is killer. So if you're going to make them work, if you have to have in-ears and you ha- and you want to make them work, the only thing I've found to do, and it's imperative that you do this, is you make them work by putting, um, first of all, you have to have your own mix. Avion, uh, like the Behringer X32 digital console has a phone app that everybody can use. Make sure you hook that up. And some people run that board and don't even know that, but it has an app. You can actually do all your own mixing in your ears. And you have to add a room mic into your board. So a room mic, okay. A big fat room mic hang from the ceiling right in the middle of the room or put it somewhere so that in your in-ear mix, you like on channel 16, you call it room mic, and you can add in the room mic to your in-ear mix, and then it sounds like you're in the room. That's what's going to make you feel connected to the band. You can hear, yeah, you can hear the congregation sing. You can hear the natural reverb of the room. It, it really makes it, it's weird, because if you do it right, you can almost trick yourself to not believe you even have in-ears in. So I think a lot of churches hesitate to use the in-ear monitors because of the expense and because of the um, learning curve involved. Is yeah, that right? It, it's true, and it, it's getting cheaper and cheaper. Like if, the, if you have the Behringer X32 now, which everybody has that board almost, that has a, a sound digit, board. Yeah, soundboard. Then you can just, everybody has their iPhone, and they can actually use their iPhone uh, to make their own mix. But you still have to have the other system with getting the in-ears into your ear, like the packs. The really expensive part for you guys who are kind of in this, getting into this, is the, is the wireless packs. 
Okay, there's a cheaper way to do it, and there's stuff online you can check out. Uh, just Google, you know, cheap way to. But the the cheapest way to do it is just run like a headphone m- mix off the board. Different ways to do it to where you don't have to have everybody on wireless. Even in the big churches I was playing with, we we would have uh, the the front line would have wireless packs, which are very expensive. But then the back line, the, the drummer, bass player, guitar, the guys that were back behind those. Uh, we would just plug into a cable that came out of the wall, and those don't cost very much money. Okay. So you can most of your band can really just be on a cabled system, which is cheap. And then you maybe the worship leader has a wireless pack, or maybe the people up front have a wireless pack, and those are the expensive part. But yeah, and the learning curve. Everybody has to learn to do it. There's different ways. Uh, like at the church I play with, they would have one guy at rehearsal. He's a sound guy, and he's the monitor mixer. He would walk around on stage with the iPad. So that anybody who wanted to change their mix, they would just raise their hand and he'd come over and he'd fix it on the fly. He'd keep doing it okay. all through rehearsal. But now you're saying that people can do this on their own phones. They can. But if you are if you got a bunch of new people coming in and they don't know how to use their phones, they wouldn't tell everybody about that part. Oh, they that would be makes like, sense. We, we, we can fix it for you with the iPad. But then once you realize, well, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. They would be like, okay, well, here's your iPhone password to get into the mixer for you. And they would give certain band members the ability that were ready to mix their own mix on their iPhones. But then they have that guy at practice who would just walk around and be like, anybody needs a monitor mix, I'm good. And I think that's good because, you know, you get to the service and by the time you've had two or three run throughs and practice and then Sunday morning run through, you pretty much your monitors shouldn't change much by that point. And that's it. Having the phone app, I like. I didn't know about this until just now, but I'm I'm thinking, what a great idea this was because that takes all of those little um, stand boards, like little yeah, mini little mixing mixers. boards. Yeah, they're they're, gone. they're all off the stage. So that cleans up a ton of of stage area and cuts the cost down considerably. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's some new companies out doing some really cool stuff with this to where the whole system is run off the phone and it's you just buy an extra computer and some other stuff. I'll put some links in that into my show notes uh, because there is there the technology has changed a lot. Now, I still love the Aviom. I love that physical blue mixer or the Behringer has one that's cheaper that you can just reach down and change it, change it really fast. The phone app is cool because you can just show up at church and be like, Hey, let me get the phone app, you know, password and they give it to you and you have it. And then you got it, but you have to keep your phone on, you put it in your pocket or if somebody, you know, you have to turn it, you know, there's, mm. yeah, I guess if your phone died in the middle of yeah, service, that could be, it's good. It's what you can afford. Yeah. I, I really personally like the blue mixers, uh, because I want them right there. And if you, if I was leading worship a little bit more, st- uh, steadily and I was forced into a phone app scenario, I'd ha- I had my phone on an actual phone stand. Like I had a little arm off my mic stand and my phone okay. was in, is in a cradle mm-hmm. and I would just leave it on and I could just mess with it. But what I found with that system is by the time you got started, you didn't want to mess with it because you're, you're leading worship. You're not going to like sit there and open your phone. Your phone would keep sleeping. You have to keep opening uh. it and going back to the app. So the Avioms are, to me, a little more user friendly on stage. Mm. But uh, extremely, you know, I think when we bought our Aviom unit back in the day, it was like six thousand, seven thousand dollars $7,000. So if you're in, if you have a Behringer X32, you can literally implement in ears like now for just everybody open your phone and here's some cables that we got running from this uh, mixer thing. So it's, it's, it's cheaper. It's doable. You have to know what you want, but that's, that's why I love and hate in-ears and everybody is going to in-ears. Look, you can go on Amazon, check the links on worshipbandbuilder.com slash podcast. Cause right here you have a hundred dollar set of in-ears. Okay. And they're on Amazon. Sure. SE 2015s. Uh, you have also a $22 pair of Yin Yu KZ ZST hybrid balanced in ears. They're basically like exaggerated headphones. You can even use headphones. You can even use your little Apple Air Bods pods, but they don't close out the sound. So mm-hmm. you, you've got closed ear, open ear, half open ear, but a real set of in ears closes out all the sound. 
Is that what you think is the best? That's what I think is the best. If you're going to do it, do it right. Use closed, completely closed in ear. I have a, a, a pair that they cost $400, but I got them on sale uh, used from some guy on Reverb.com for 99 bucks or 100 bucks. So they were much better than, but for about 100 bucks, if you're just starting, you can get a set of in ears for 100 bucks. The ones that I really want, if I was going to use them all, they're more like 1200 this is Ooh. for a set of earplugs, your earphones, you know. They're molded to your ear. They're high-end, three-driver types. That they can go all the way from like six, 700 is the next level up to 12 or 15. They can get super expensive. But my, I'm telling you all this because I use a pair that I bought for 100 bucks on Reverb, on basically on eBay. Hmm. And you put you can put new little earbuds on them. You, you want something that will close up your ears. You wanna, you're not going to get the first pair. And you, you just don't be afraid to test a few pair. Get some that really block out the sound that fit in your ear. And my ears are two different sizes in the holes. Mm. So sometimes they're just it's hard to find out. In other words, just figure out what works for you, but start with cheap ones. We use cheap ones at our church now, and you know, they stick them in there and they work. If you want to have really, really good sound, you're gonna spend some cash. You know, you're gonna you might spend hundred to four hundred. And if you wanna get really, really good, you're gonna spend probably about a grand. On your personal set of headphones. Yeah. So it can get expensive. Uh, but like our church is doing really good and they just bought these like really these $20 ones on or 30. I think they're like 29 or 39 bucks on Amazon. Okay. They've got plastic ear things and you can wipe them off with uh, alcohol and everybody can use them the next week. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. I have my own set because I travel and I play different places and most people will. They'll have their own set that they just plug in and that's yeah, the best Yeah, because that way. just seems a little yucky. It's pretty yucky, but I mean, you know, churches do it. And the, <laughs> uh, back in Illinois, they had, everybody had their own set of um, like the yellow buds that went on the tip. And so this you, is not specific to Illinois. This is just a place where we led worship in yeah, Illinois. Those people in Illinois, they like to share all, earphones. All of the Illinoisans. What do you what do you call someone from Illinois? I don't Illinois. I've got different words. I'm not going to say them. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends in Illinois that we absolutely love. So well, that out. is that shout is out not, to Nate Westerfield. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but we and at Nate's church, and we used to be at his place. We would have uh, the same. Everybody used the same ear ear plug ear ear pieces, but we have our own. Like they had their own tips that went on the it, that went in your ear. So you could, you had your own tips, and you just put them on the thing. So there's different systems. Don't be afraid of it. Um, it's it's definitely another world. It takes a lot of technical advice. And it takes a lot of trial and error. And at the end of the day, I promise you, you will still get up on stage, put your inners in, and probably kind of hate them, <laughs> you know, until they're really tweaked in. And yeah. then you can start to like them. But it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's, it's something that, you know, the, my biggest takeaway to, to really on the in-ears is have a room mic and have your own mix, period. If you can't have those two things, I would stay with a floor wedge. So, okay, can you just help me with, is there still a really big gap between having floor or mini monitors as opposed to purchasing the in-ear monitors? Is there still a, a great expanse between the two prices? Y yeah, I think so. Yes, so, so you think a lot of churches will still opt for floor or mini if you're monitors. on a real if you're on a tight budget with a small team yeah you're gonna try to make floor wedges work because just break it down if you're if each floor wedge costs you 250 bucks you know and you have three of them that's mm -hmm. 750 bucks and you're done and you're done you can put those around the stage and you can kind of put it three ox mixes off your any mixing board has usually four to eight oxes Okay, so let's say if you really want an in-ear system, you're probably looking, I mean, one Aviom unit, one unit costs like three or $400, you know, 250, 300 bucks. So if you bought five of those, you're at 1500 bucks and you still, uh, you still don't have any in-ear actual, actual things to put in people's ears. Okay. So you're, you're at double the cost and you're only, you haven't even got the system built yet. So yeah, there, there are really, I've seen some guys online who have got some really smart uh, it is getting to where you can you can get 
the budget down and get an in-ear system that might be close, but really it, wedges are still just super cheap now. I mean, you can throw three powered wedges on your stage for probably 600 bucks, you know, and, yeah. uh, and put a shield around your drums and you're not going to touch an in-ear system for that. But we are getting closer. Like with the X32 Behringer, you can literally, I think, just uh, use a headphone amp that might cost 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and attach that to some cables that are 20 bucks a piece and put them in your ears. And you would have, you could use your iPhones. And so you could get, you know, if you have the Behringer X32 mixer, then you probably could uh, do it for the same price. Is that just for example, or is that pretty much the only mixer? That... It's, it's the low line budget, you know, budget line church mixer and the Behringer X32 is what we have. And a lot, like all, a lot of churches have it, but there are other digital consoles that have the same kind of thing, like the Yamaha version or the, or the Mackie version. They're all going to have sort of a similar thing with an app to it that you can use the app and tweak it out and make it work. So yeah, I mean, if you have any questions about this, surely send me some notes. I'll send you some more notes. Uh, worship builder.com slash podcast. This one is going long. So we've got to get off here. We will talk more about in-ear monitors, uh, all through the year. And we'll do a lot more also in our, in our, in our audio training online and foundations. You can join that at worship and God bless you. Happy mixing, but always just hear yourself and do your best and tweak on. That's all I say. <laughs> keep tweaking. Quote of the day. Just keep tweaking. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs>